you are running out of time and that this life isn't a rehearsal and that there's no pause and rewind and there is no do over. And I see a lot of people stuck in marriages or relationships or in jobs or careers or in towns, in, in cities, in places that literally make them feel miserable and they're unhappy and they wake up every single day doing the same old BS over and over and over again and not really doing and going after what makes their soul sing, what makes them feel alive, what makes them happy, what brings joy, what makes them feel loved. And I think so many people, we get stuck in the trap of like, well, I've, I've been with him for so long, or um, I've lived here my whole life, or I've worked here for 20 years, you know, and we give our lives to something else rather than to live for ourself. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Journey of a Fearless Female. I am your host, Paola Rosser, and this week it's your holiday Christmas special. For the last two weeks, my virtual assistant, Alex, who is an amazing human being, I love you, Alex, um, she's been asking our Instagram audience to submit questions for this special. Now, if you're not following me over on Instagram, make sure you head over and hit at fearlessfemale underscore coach. So before I get into the questions, I wanted to make sure that whoever is watching me on YouTube right now, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm almost to my goal of hitting a thousand subscribers. Um, it's seriously so incredible to see my channel grow. I recently got an email saying that I hit 250,000 views. So thank you for watching me here on YouTube. If you're listening to me on Apple Podcast or on Spotify, thank you guys so much. Make sure you leave a review because it really helps this channel, this podcast get to more ears. All right, so let's get started. Okay, one of the first questions I got was, how can I heal the core wound of unworthiness? Oh, this one's pretty heavy, right? Some of us have this feeling of being unworthy, not good enough, unloved. And when you think about the core wound, you really have to do some investigating. Where did this wound begin? And you really have to take a deep dive. Go back to your childhood. Go back to your teenage years really start to think, where did this all begin, this feeling of unworthiness? And sometimes it doesn't have to be this huge traumatic event. It could be um, as simple as someone telling you you were too fat or too ugly or someone, a best friend picking someone else over you or, you know, not getting placed first at like some spelling bee. It could be a lot of things, especially when you're a child. When you're a child and things happen to you, like let's say, you know, everybody else got to go on a field trip, but your grades weren't good enough, so you weren't allowed to go on the field trip. That small moment in time can make you feel completely unworthy. And as a child, I love when my husband describes like, for example, um, he's in his 50s, so he thinks about life in like quarters. So he's in the, what, 25, and then he's in his second quarter, right? Second quarter of life. My stepsons who are underneath 25 years old, they're in their first quarter of life, right? So you examine the first quarter of your life, like the first 25 years of your life, and look for that core wound. Where did it begin? And then really go back and talk to that person. Like do some meditations. I've done some meditations. Um, I've actually done RTT therapy, which is uh, rapid transformational therapy, where you go back and you talk to that little girl or little boy. I love to carry pictures of my um, myself when I was a little girl, and I can go back and I can talk to her and I can like reparent her and tell her, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. That person was hurting and she didn't mean it. And I reparent her and I tell her just how worthy she is, just how loved she is, just how important she is. So we can take these little moments when we're a child because we have no reference, no, 
huge map of life, right? We only have a reference of the first five or the first 10 years. And so when we didn't get chosen to go on the field trip or we got made fun of in class or our parent took away, you know, our Christmas toys or whatever it is, whatever childhood wound that caused you to feel unworthy, we didn't have a huge reference to like really do our, our problem solving. We couldn't say, oh, this they didn't really mean that because we had just a small reference point. We only had two or three or five years or 10 years of experience. See, if someone was to do something mean to me now at 43, I have 43 years of wisdom. I have 43 years of experience. I have 43 years of tools and things that I can do so that doesn't hurt me to the point where I would develop a core wound. But when you're a child, you don't have that many years of reference points or wisdom or experience. So it really can make this core wound stay and stick with you for the rest of your life. So if you're really looking to heal that core wound of unworthiness, then I highly recommend doing rapid transformational therapy, doing meditations where you go back and try to figure out where this core wound began and what situation, what experience, what event caused that wound, and then reparent that little child and remind them who they are. Give them the love, give them the attention, allow them to be heard, allow them to be, to feel valid in their emotions, and, and then just really process that event. Because if we don't, then that wound will stay with us for a long time. All right. Um, hope that answers your question. Moving on to question number two. What life advice do people not take seriously enough? <sighs> for those of you who know me and have been following me for a while, you know that I'm wildly obsessed with near-death experiences. Because I am, I think about death a lot. Uh, more than <laughs> other people, I think. And I think the advice that people do not take seriously enough is that you are running out of time and that this life isn't a rehearsal and that there's no pause and rewind and there is no do-over. And I see a lot of people stuck in marriages or relationships or in jobs or careers or in towns, in, in cities, in places that literally make them feel miserable and they're unhappy and they wake up every single day doing the same old BS over and over and over again and not really doing and going after what makes their soul sing, what makes them feel alive, what makes them happy, what brings joy, what makes them feel loved. And I think so many people, we get stuck in the trap of like, well, I've, I've been with him for so long or um, I've lived here my whole life or I've worked here for 20 years, you know, and we give our lives to something else rather than to live for ourself. And life is going to go by so quick within a blink of an eye. I, I literally feel like I'm still in high school and yet I'm 43. And I think to myself, like, I, I'm glad that I read the book, The Secret, when I was 28, and I'm glad that I do vision boards, and I get to see things that I want to do, and I check things off, like, I just recently went to go see Sedona and the Grand Canyon, and I rode a helicopter over the Grand Canyon, and I loved sharing that on my social media because there were so many people that said, oh, I'm adding that to my vision board, or I'm making sure the next time I go to the Grand Canyon, I go on a helicopter ride, because life is short. Life is shorter than we think, and we're not guaranteed to live until we're 80, 90, or even 100 years old in order to finally retire and get to do the things that we want to do. And I think about that all the time, you know, especially when we were at the Grand Canyon, I saw a lot of older people, and I could tell that they were struggling to breathe, struggling to walk. Some, some of them were even carrying like a cane or like a, a stool that they could sit and take breaks on. And I think to myself, like, I, I spent a lot of my 20s, like, drinking and dancing at a club and not that kind of club, but, you know, drinking and dancing and just uh, not really exploring. I love that my stepson, Kyle, is, like, spending his 20s, like, 
driving through the United States and going to national parks and traveling and and doing the things that he wants to do and seeing the world because he's healthy and he's young and he's got the energy and he's got that enthusiasm and it's really broadened his eyes to like how beautiful and big the world is. And I wish I would have done more traveling. Whatever it is that lights up your soul, make sure you're doing it because time is ticking and it's running out. And if you are young and you're healthy and you can walk and you can breathe in high altitudes, then do it now. Go do the things that you've always wanted to do. I recently was listening to a near-death experience of this military guy who died. He went to see Jesus. He came back. And one of the things that he talked to um, with Jesus, he said, and you could believe these or not, but I truly believe in near-death experiences, but this is his story, not mine. He said that Jesus said he should enjoy life, that he forgot how to be a child, and that he wasn't enjoying life, and that he needed to share more laughter and joy and love with the world. And, um, and so when he came back to his body, he said, I quit my job, my corporate job, and I just took like five or six jobs doing things that I like to do. Like he's like, I was a radio DJ for the local radio station. He said he was an announcer for a hockey team. Um, he joined a comedy club and took comedy classes. Um, what else did he do? He did like two or three other things that just really lit his soul on fire and made him be joyous and happy, almost with childlike wonder. And he said, it brought me joy and happiness and love, but it also brought the people around me happiness, joy, and love. And then he said something got into him about probably five years into it where he thought maybe I should grow up and get a real job. And he did. He went back to corporate and he did that for two years and he was miserable and he hated life. And he did a retreat where he went and did some meditations. And just when he was meditating, again, the voice of God came to him. And, and he was like, you really need to get back out there. Life is too short. Go back and enjoy life. You're not meant to be miserable. So he went back, quit his corporate job, and started doing other things that made him happy. I don't remember the rest of the story, but life is too short. That's the thing that I feel the advice that people don't take seriously enough is that life is short that you are here for a limited amount of time and a lot of us are wasting that time working for others being miserable being in a, a loveless relationship being in a town that just is you don't want to be there anymore I, I have some friends who would love to live in Hawaii and I always tell her go go live in Hawaii what is what is what are you waiting for you know like why are you what are you waiting for until you're like 80 and you can't even walk on the beach like go and do the things that make your soul sing and do it today because we're not guaranteed to live until we're 80 what if you only live for the next five years or the next 10 years go do what you want to do now and sign up for those classes, whether it's singing or dancing or piano, or if you're going to go play, um, what's that new craze that everybody's doing? Pickleball. Go do that and do the things that make your soul sing. Like, I'm so thankful that I started this podcast because this makes my soul sing. So, okay, that's, I hope that answered number two. Number three, how do you not take things so seriously? <laughs> Well, I'm kind of bad at that because sometimes I really do take things way too seriously and I'm very type A personality, but I am starting to not take things so seriously. And one of the ways that I do that is with laughter and joy and comedy. Um, my husband and I are very funny people. He's very funny. He loves dad jokes. I love his dad jokes. I live for dad jokes. Um, we kind of, everything that happens to us, we kind of like crack jokes about it, not in a mean way where we're attacking one another or we're trying to hurt each other's feelings, but we kind of just like laugh about it. Um, my friend Michelle recently sent me this TikTok of a husband who got the refrigerator stuck in a doorway and he's like, well, there's this much room on top of the doorway. You should just squeeze in there. And the wife, you know, instead of the wife yelling at him like, why the hell did you do that? Or why didn't you take the doors off? Like she could have like made it worse. She just laughed it off with him. She was laughing so hard. She was trying not to pee herself. And then when she got on top of the refrigerator, um, he was joking like his, you know, she was at the edge of the refrigerator and he was joking like he was Jack and she was Rose. And he was like, there's no room for me up there. Are you sure? And it's just like moments like that 
you can find laughter and joy in everything that's going on in your life that you don't have to make things or take things so seriously. You know, if you can find the joy and the laughter, because in the grand scheme of your life, you're never going to look back and be like, oh, I messed up on July 22nd, 2019. I didn't send that Excel spreadsheet. Or on August 13th of 2002, I, you know, wore my shirt inside out and everybody saw me at the Target. Like, don't take life so seriously. In the grand scheme of the entire picture of your life, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So joke about it. Laugh at yourself. Yes, you're allowed to be angry. Yes, you're allowed to, you know, have a moment. But then laugh about it and just like in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to matter. So that's how I make sure to not take things so seriously. I try to find the humor in things. I try to laugh at myself. I try to crack jokes. Um, like, for example, I was uh, cleaning out the garage and I pulled a, a cord or a wire and the uh, <laughs> the ladder fell on my head and at first yes it hurt and I cried my husband hugged me and I thought it was a special moment because I you know I just love when my husband gives me all that attention and he gives me that hug and it makes me feel safe and secure but then afterwards we were <laughs> laughing about it <laughs> I make sure to just add humor to your life find humor in every situation and know that in uh, you know, and if you get really angry at something and you think, oh, I can't find the humor in it, just go back to a mantra. I, I have a mantra that I say to myself when I feel like I can't find any humor in it. I'll say to myself, everything is always working out for me. Only good is going to come out of the situation. And I say that over and over and over to calm my nervous system and get my mind back on positive thoughts. Okay, the next question is, how can I become more spiritual? I recently was listening to a podcast and this guest said that religion is like a box and spirituality is always growing and evolving. And the way he described it is, you know, religion is like, come to this box, either a church or the Bible, I have all the answers, right? This is all your answers are going to be in this box. Um, and spirituality is more like, you're always questioning and growing and evolving and you're more open to different things. Um, I think you can become more spiritual by looking inward and by really just asking the questions to God because I love that we have a direct line to spirit, to the divine. Um, I personally look for signs. I'm always asking questions out loud for spirit to guide me. And also, I'm just, I look to other people to see their spiritual adventures. And I, I really, you know, I watch a lot of documentaries too. So I really want you to understand that not everyone who is a human, any human on this earth, has all the answers. Okay. So I don't personally have all the answers. Um, I think the cosmic joke is we think we know everything, but we really won't know until we go to the other side. So please be weary because whatever you decide to do, whether you become religious or spiritual, there are people in both sectors that can become really cult-like and can really take advantage of you. I don't think we need to look outside of ourselves to find that connection with God, source the divine, because I believe that God, source the divine spirit lives within us in every particle of our body. I mean, we're an extension of source. So if you're trying to be more spiritual, just go inward, do a lot of meditation, do a lot of earthing, a lot of grounding, um, like question out loud, like ask spirit, like, show me signs, give me, what do I need to read next? You'd be surprised how quickly the universe will respond because I would get books, I would get, people would come into my frame of life and all of a sudden they're telling me you should read this or you should meet this person or they'll drop like a beautiful nugget of wisdom that I needed to hear at that moment. We are all part of the divine, we're all extensions of the divine, so just be open to receiving the answers and please be careful because there are people out there that take advantage of your search of your journey. So do your research. I always tell people, do your research if you're going to hire a spiritual mentor or a life coach like me, um, or if you're going to go to a church because um, we're all human. 
no one here on this plane is perfect. No one here on this plane is Jesus Christ <laughs> and has that perfection, that light, and is not 100%. Everyone is human. Even I am human. I have anger. I have resentment. I have bitterness. I mean, I'm human. We're all human. So I, I still, it, it brings me so much like perplexion of why people tend to seek someone else, another human, to tell them about spirituality or to have them give them some religious moment when it really is just between you. It's personal. It's a personal relationship with the divine, with the light, with spirit. It's nobody can get you there but you. I can't describe to you the things that have happened to me because they were personal and I could tell you about them, but they were personal messages for me. So if you're trying to become more spiritual, all I say is just be open ask questions out loud, talk to spirit and the divine as if they're with you, meditate, go inward, journal, and whatever doesn't feel good, just let it go. You don't have to, just because you're spiritual doesn't mean you have to believe in like rocks or tarot cards or angels or, you know, whatever feels good to you, follow that. If it doesn't feel good, you're feeling like you're walking on eggshells, don't follow it. Just don't do that. And and if someone is telling you outside of you that that seems a little bit unhealthy or, you know, don't think that they're trying to take away anything from you. Some people really love you and they just want to take care of you and they want to make sure that you are safe. Do your research, please. I mean, I just finished watching the um, documentary of Mother God. I still I'm baffled that these people followed her just completely blind. There are so many other documentaries where people are just desperate for answers and I understand that. I understand that when you go through something tragic like the loss of a loved one or a breakup or a divorce or you lost your job and you're seeking answers and you want someone to give them to you and, you know, religion makes that promise. Some spirituality people make that promise like I can give this to you. I could give you the answers. But honestly, the answers come from within. The kingdom of God is within. The kingdom of light is within. And you just need to find it for yourself. And it's different for everyone. It is completely different for everyone because we're all unique and special and divine in our own right. So how do you become more spiritual? Go within. What is the best advice that someone has ever given to you about love? Okay, this is the fourth question. Oh, fifth question. What is the best advice that someone has ever given to me about love. Okay, so when I got married, this comes from my best friend's mom, Vicky. Vicky um, is my best friends, Erica and Allison. They're no longer Bushes. They are Maragos and Campos. <laughs> um, but their mom gave me the best advice. And she said, always forgive and accept forgiveness. And that was one of my favorite advice that I ever got when I got married is that to forgive my husband and to accept forgiveness i think in relationships it's really really hard a to say you're sorry and b to actually accept the apology when someone's apologizing to you i see a lot of couples holding grudges or like putting something that they're mad away so that they could bring it up in a different conversation or two weeks later or two months later and say remember when you did this and you know they're holding on to all these things so that they can like have a better argument or have a better stance and honestly the best advice I ever got was just to forgive to accept forgiveness and to move on and that has really helped our relationship so much because uh, growing up like my mom was very good at like holding record you know our her love was very conditional and so I love that our relationship has grown and evolved and we both say we're sorry when we've been wrong and we both accept apologies and we both are very good at just letting it go and moving on and tomorrow's another day. You know, it sucked when I was growing up that if I did something towards my mom and she didn't forgive me that she would hold that grudge for years, months, days, weeks and I didn't know where I stood and I always felt like I was walking on eggshells and so that was something that was really new to me too because when I when I was married in the beginning of our relationship, you know, we would get into an argument, he would say he was sorry, I would say I was sorry, we'd, you know, make up and the next morning I'd wake up with anxiety thinking that he would still be mad at me or that he was still ruminating over that argument when in reality he had moved on. 
So it was something new for me, um, and it took me a while to adjust. But yes, um, the best advice I ever got was to forgive and to learn how to accept the forgiveness and to move on. Keyword, move on, let it go. It's in the past. Once you've forgiven him, it's time to let it go. And if you can't forgive him, then that's something else you need to think about. (laughs) Okay, so the next question is, what is a true personal story that people have a hard time believing? A true personal story for me. Oh, I have so many. Let's see. Um, that I was insecure. <laughs> um, because I'm on social media and because I'm constantly doing reels, I share a lot of myself on my Instagram, my personal Instagram page. I do a lot of videos on TikTok. But yeah, for a lot of my life, I was very insecure and I hid it with alcoholism. I wasn't in- exactly an alcoholic, but I did use alcohol as a mean to feel safe to be myself but deep down inside I was insecure about my looks about my hair about the fact that I was Mexican the fact that you know I didn't have a boyfriend or I I was very very insecure and it came out like I would drink and then I felt like I was myself like I am now because I'm sober but not I'm sober right now (laughs) I'm not sober (laughs) I do like to have a cocktail every once in a while but um I I used alcohol to allow myself to come out of my shell, but with alcohol, the rear, the head of like my core wound of feeling insecure, unworthy, not good enough would like prowl out and I would be angry and bitter and jealous and mean. I lost so many friends because of some drunken stupor and yeah, that's a hard, people have a hard time believing that I was insecure, that I didn't have confidence because you know, they see me on social media and they think she's so secure and confident and, and look at her, she can, you know, get on camera. And it took me a long time to get on camera. I mean, I've had this podcast for over four years and this is the first year I've actually like shown myself on camera. It took me a very, very long time to be secure and to love myself enough to just show up on camera. Um, so yeah, people have a hard time believing that I was insecure and there are still times where my insecurity creeps in and you know, I don't want to show up on camera or I don't want to do the things that I know I should be doing. So yeah, it's a hard thing to believe, but you would be surprised how many people have insecurities and they're struggling too. Um, They just have a better way of hiding it. Okay, so the next question is, oh, this is like a little bit of a story. I invited my husband's family over for dinner. No one ate my food and I felt really embarrassed and sad. I later found out that my mother-in-law had cooked a large meal and fed everyone before they came to my house. Should I say something? What should I do next year? Well, first of all, sometimes I think like you shouldn't say anything at all because this just seems like a red flag narcissistic move. And when you try to explain to someone that would do this thing to you, they most likely won't take lighthearted. They would get really defensive and they would think that you're crazy and make you feel even worse than you already feel. So what I would do is set a clear boundary to not allow your mother-in-law over, don't invite her for dinner. I, like for me, I think to myself, if you show me who you are, fool me once. But if I allow you back in, then I'm fooling myself. So I would set a clear boundary. Obviously your mother-in-law think she's a better cook than you then don't allow her to come don't give her the pleasure of coming over and eating your food anymore she doesn't deserve your energy she doesn't deserve the time that you put into the food and she definitely doesn't deserve the money that you spent on the food so if I were you I would just set a clear boundary she obviously thinks that you are not a good cook so then she doesn't deserve your food I personally think you know this is a huge red flag but you probably also need to do some healing and believing that you are worthy and good enough to set this boundary. Because if you have that core wound of feeling not good enough or unworthy or you're feeling sad, the inner child within you is going to be like, no, 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 please, please, I'll show you how good I am. And then you'll try to do another dinner or you'll try to, you know, kiss up to her. But she's already shown you who she is. Don't waste your energy on people like that. You know, there are plenty of people who would love to come to your house and break bread with you and would appreciate a home-cooked meal made with your love and your hands. Spend that energy with them. Don't spend it trying to live up to your mother-in-law's standards. You know, I mean, 
it's not worth it. It's really not. Give her the same courtesy and the same respect she gives you. And that's it. All right, so the next one is, I got fired. My ex-boss is now asking for the whereabouts of some important files. How should I respond? Don't respond. You got fired. Bye. <laughs> I uh, worked for this company for a very long time. I had a toxic boss who treated me like shit. Literally took advantage of my type A personality, my, you know, I will do it, gung-ho, I'm there for you. I used to work like 8, 9, 10, 12 hours. I would drive to his house, drop off his work. Like I did all kinds of things to try to like make him feel like I was worthy and good enough for that position. And then I got fired and I was like, you know what, bye. <laughs> I was hurt. I was really devastated but when you know he started to ask questions about things like where's this keys where's that like what's going on with this uh, I'm sorry like uh no uh, so, you know again you have to set your boundaries you are teaching people how to treat you so if you allow people to roll over you and to treat you like you are disposable then people are going to continue to treat you that way. And if you give off that energy, then that's the energy you're going to receive back and you're going to continue to receive that in all different types of relationships, whether it's your mother-in-law or your boss or your friend or your husband or your girlfriend. If you allow people to treat you like you were insignificant, then people will continue to do that. So he fired you. He's looking for whereabouts. He should have thought of that before he fired you. Um, as far as you're concerned, don't even answer, don't even respond to his text messages because he fired you. And if you're afraid that he's going to like not give you a good review for your next job, he, don't put him down as a reference. Do not put him down as a reference. What is he gonna say? I fired her and then she wouldn't tell me where the stuff is? Sorry, I don't know and, and I'm not gonna answer your questions. I no longer work for you. And it's funny because I also had um, a boss who told me, I would never work another day in this industry ever again. And I was afraid, don't get me wrong. I spent hours in bed, like so afraid that he was going to, you know, blackmail me or blacklist me in the industry of real estate forever. And then I realized he doesn't have that much power. No one has that much power over you unless you give them that power. Okay, listen to me. No one has power over you unless you give them that power. All right. The next question is, I only have two more and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. So thank you for listening this far. Again, if you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you're listening to me on Spotify or on um, Apple iTunes, make sure you leave a review. Okay. The last two questions. Uh, what are the most important questions you must be asking yourself on a daily basis? Um, what is my purpose? How can I better serve humanity or myself or others? Ah, <sighs> those are two big ones. Oh, here's another one. Am I on the right path? So those are some questions you should be asking yourself on a daily basis, especially if you're feeling stuck or if you're feeling unmotivated or if you're feeling like, um, you know, you're just stuck on Groundhog's Day. Ask yourself these questions. What is my purpose? Say it out loud because your spirit guides, source, the divine, your higher self, they're going to give you the answers. The universe will respond. So say these questions out loud. What is my purpose? Why am I here? Am I on the right path? Ask yourself these questions, you know, out loud. Am I doing the best for humanity, for my highest self, for the highest good of all? Like, how can I serve others more? And trust me, the opportunities will appear. The answers will show up in forms of a book, a podcast, a coach, a friend. Uh, you know, you'll hear something on TV and all of a sudden you're going to be like, yes, that's what I should be doing. And here's another thing. Don't feel like you're going to be on a path for one thing and that's going to be the thing for your rest of your life. I recently interviewed somebody on my podcast who said, you know, after 26 years, she left her husband. She started doing 5Ks. She wrote a book. She's on podcasts now. Like I constantly see women reinvent themselves at 30, at 40, at 50, at 60. Like you're allowed to do and be and have and do whatever you want. So uh, obviously, like if you're not hurting someone else, but like really live life, live your life. And if, if you're stuck, like trying to figure out like 
what am I supposed to do? Then ask those questions out loud. What am I here for? What is my purpose? Am I on the right path? How can I help humanity? How can I be of service to you, God, source, the divine, whatever it is that you call that we're all a part of? Because we are a part of something bigger. How can I leave a legacy? Like ask these questions and trust me, the answers will come. Okay, last question. How do I break free from the cycle of depression, self-blame, and feeling like I have no purpose? In order to break free from depression, so first of all, depression is just repressed emotions. So if you're feeling depressed and you're not leaving your couch, you're not leaving your house, you're not leaving the bedroom, or you're not even getting off of bed or changing or taking a shower, first things first, like really you need to move your body. You need to get up. You need to get up and and you could take small steps from like, all right, I'm at least just going to get out of the bed. Tomorrow, I'm going to put on clothes. The next day, I'm going to shower. The next day, I'm going to brush my teeth. Like take small baby steps, but really start moving that energy out of your body. Okay. And I tell my clients to go for a walk. Make sure you go for a daily walk out in the sun, out in nature. If it's snowing, like, okay, as long as you're out in nature, go out there, walk, move your body, like get on a, a jumper and jump on, what do they call rebounders and jump that energy, get on a treadmill, go to your local gym. Um, but I know when you're depressed, it's kind of hard to be around other people, but like really, really move your body, turn on a song and dance in your room, even if it's just for a little bit. Okay. Getting out of the, the cycle of self blame. I highly recommend to start listening to motivational YouTubes or affirmations or meditations. I have meditations on this YouTube channel, so you can go ahead and click on some of my meditations, but you could just go on YouTube and self love meditations. Okay. And reprogram the brain that is telling you that is sitting there blaming you and making you feel guilty and making you feel afraid. You could easily change the self-talk from, I'm not good enough, I'm stupid, I can't believe myself, look how fat I am, to I am good enough, I am lovely, I am beautiful, I'm smart, I'm confident, I'm courageous, I'm brilliant. I'm. The more you learn affirmations and the more you can change the statements that are running in your head, because I know, I know those statements. They are negative, they are drowning, they are feeling like you're suffocating. And they're making you spiral to the point that you're so depressed you won't leave your bed or your couch or your room or your house. And so the only way you can do that is by changing that record. And if you don't have positive affirmations, then just look them up on YouTube, put on some headphones and listen to them on a regular basis. I highly recommend to start listening to them right as you're falling asleep because that's when your subconscious mind is like a sponge and it'll suck up all those affirmations. And if you're feeling like you have no purpose, go back to the questions you should be asking yourself every day. Because if you feel like you have no purpose, start asking, what is my purpose? And I, I kid you not, your higher self, your spiritual guides, your angels, your God, source, the divine, whatever you believe in, because there's something bigger, there's something bigger than us that we cannot explain. And that will give you the answers. I call it God, people call it source, people call it divine, people call it light, people call it angels. I don't care if you call it Yoda, but you will get an answer. The divine will give you and guide you. If you say, help, I need help. I am stuck. And trust me, you will get your answers and you will have to make moves though. You, you, you will get the answers, but you will have to take action into the person you want to become. So I was listening to a podcast on my walk this morning. I do a two mile walk. It's called the two mile crew. Shout out to Lisette and Jessica, who's in my two mile crew. But I was listening to a podcast and it said, you have to create the ideal version of who you are. And when you've created the ideal version of who you are, you have to start acting like her and responding the way she responds. Okay, so let's say you're a person who's depressed right now, like this person, and you're feeling self blame, and you're feeling like you have no purpose. But your ideal version of who you are, but I usually tell my clients, I call them Paola 2.0, or whatever your name is 2.0. The ideal version 2.0 Paola 
would not be depressed, would not be feeling like she has no purpose, would not be laying in her bed all day. So you ask yourself, what would Paola 2.0 do? Well, Paola 2.0 would get up, brush her teeth, put on her shoes, and go for a two-mile walk. What would Paola 2.0 do, you know, after arguing with her husband? Would she get pissed off and, and like, throw the ring at him and ask for a divorce? Or would she go and apologize and move on? What would Paola 2.0 do in this situation? Is she going to get into a fight with the person at Target and just be pissed off because they took her cart or whatever? Or will Paola just say, excuse me, and then walk around? Like, you have to visualize the person you want to be and act like her and start going towards her because who you want to be, what you want to have, and the things you want to do already exist. You're just not going towards her. You 2.0 exists. The woman you want to become exists. The woman who is in love exists. The woman who has a successful business exists. The woman that's paid off their debt exists. The woman that owns a home exists. The woman who has a higher education exists. She exists in you, but you are not searching for her. You're not acting like her. You're not thinking, well, what would Paola 2.0 do? Would she lay in bed all day or would she get on the computer and start looking for a new job? Or would Paola 2.0 start writing her book? Yes, I'm giving myself advice while I'm doing this. <laughs> but seriously, set your intentions for 2024. It's seriously around the corner. If you are not part of my Fearless Power membership group, I have a, a membership group where you pay a subscription, a monthly subscription, and you get to meet with me once a month and you have access to me via Facebook chat messenger. And every month we meet. And this month, well, in January, actually, we're going to put together our vision boards and we're going to set our intentions for 2024 and we're going to write our goals for 2024. And it's super important to be around people like that because if you're depressed and if you're sad and you're just hanging out with other people who are sad and miserable and don't have any intentions to be the highest version of themselves, then you're always going to be at the status quo. You're always going to accept mediocrity. You're always going to be like, you know what? Everyone else is depressed. Everyone else hates their job. Everyone else is not in love. And so you'll stay there because misery loves company and you feel like, well, if everyone else is doing it, I guess I'm in the same boat. So it's so important to surround yourself with other people who are striving to be their 2.0 version, who are striving to be their highest self, who's intentionally trying to be better every year and who are creating goals, who are have a vision for bigger and better things. Because remember, like I said earlier in the episode, life is short. There is no redo there is no pause, hit rewind, and let's go back to my 20s and my 30s. This isn't your dress rehearsal. This is it. So if you're not living the life that you've always dreamed of and you are depressed and you're blaming yourself and you're just torturing yourself with the past and all your failures and all your mistakes and all of your rejections, then think, what is my purpose? Why am I here? How can I change my life for the better? What person do I want to be? What are the things that I want to have? What are the things that I want to do? And go and be her. Be her 2.0. She exists out there. She's out there waiting for you to be her. Waiting for you to have your aha moment to realize that you are worthy of having all of your dreams and your desires. All right, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching on YouTube. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Again, make sure you follow me on Instagram, on TikTok. On Instagram, I'm at fearlessfemale underscore coach. I'm on TikTok at paola.rosser. And make sure you follow me and hit subscribe. And Merry, Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you again for listening to Journey of a Fearless Female. I'm your host, Paola Rosser. If you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual mentor, you can book a free discovery call with me at www.fearlessfemale.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at fearlessfemale underscore coach, subscribe to my YouTube channel at fearlessfemale, or find me on TikTok. I'm under at paola.rosser.
And if you love this episode, make sure you hit subscribe, share it with your friends and leave a review. I read every single review and I truly appreciate the time you spend writing.